Welcome to day two of the Centre Court Specialised Masters Festival. You may have noticed a theme that has been threaded through uh, day one uh, and the focus on the Masters in Business Analytics, truly one of the hot graduate man management education uh, degrees of, of our age. Um, and so uh, to take that a step further on day two, we want to take a deeper dive into some of the world's top programs to really give you viewers a sense of content focus, uh, student life, career outcomes. Um, uh, and so we're starting with uh, the MSBA at the Goizetta School at Emory. And it's always my pleasure uh, to welcome Scott Radcliffe. Uh, Scott uh, served a tour of duty in Germany with the 11th Cavalry Regiment, if I remember well. Uh, wow, and this, how did you get, you must this, have looked at my LinkedIn profile. It, it's, well, it, it stood out, but then equally with Nextel and uh, SAS, IBM, Home Depot, you've got this remarkable career to your name, many years with Coxcoms, and then of course joining uh, Goizetta uh, nearly four years ago, uh, having also founded a data analytics consultancy, perfectly qualified for your role as the executive director of the MSBA program at Goizetta. And also bringing in a student voice, uh, Levi Joseph, who studied um, undergrad, he did his BBA at UT Austin, which brings back memories of Amy's ice cream and the crushings that my two kids loved so much. Uh, early career in consulting at, at SenseCore and LMI, uh, already a focus on data insights, uh, and then a real estate startup sell whenever. Uh, but all of that has now translated into a return to business school uh, and the MSBA that he began uh, last year. So Scott and Levi, thank you for joining us at the Centre Court Festival. Scott, perhaps I can start with you a little bit about Goizetta, of course, that will be familiar to our viewers, but this programme, the MSBA, you're now, what, in your sixth year. Uh, who are you attracting in, into the programme and, you know, why is it generating such extraordinary career outcomes? First of all, we are attracting the kind of student who typically has uh, you know, a background in some area that would include some analytical training. We also attract students, I think, who have some kind of math background, uh, you know, at least kind of, you know, first level calculus, uh, multivariate statistics, that kind of thing. But really, it's people who want to accelerate their entry into the world of data science and analytics. Now, having spent the bulk of my career in industry, one of the things that I believe is true about this program is the fact that it's a very hands-on, high-touch from the faculty and staff perspective is that our students gain a lot more, let's call it real world insight and experience along the way. Um, for example, Dr. Chalapa and I, he's the associate dean of the program, meet with potential clients for our uh, spring practicum projects. We meet with them an average of three times to discuss and determine whether or not we have a good project that's going to meet our educational objectives and be valuable to them. And, I, and you, you were mentioning uh, that you'd always placed this emphasis on, on you know, keeping that class size so that there was so much uh, interaction, nevertheless looking to double uh, and run a second cohort and then soon to introduce uh, the X MSBA, which will be for working professionals. So that, I suppose that underlines the strong demand you're seeing at Goizetta. Yes, very much. And, you know, and as you and I talked about briefly previously, we purposefully kept the program small so that we could really get our rhythm down, you know, get things kind of worked out in terms of what are our standards. And now that we've had, you know, five go rounds currently in our six, we believe that we're ready to expand the program significantly. And again, you know, part of another aspect of why we waited, you know, that amount of time to do so is that we wanted to make sure we had the resources lined up to continue to provide a very 
um, high touch kind of program. For example, here in the spring, when we're doing our practicum projects, you know, I meet with each of the currently 13 project teams twice a week. Mm -hmm. Dr. Chalapa and another professor meets with them at least once a week. And probably just on more informal conversations that the students can schedule, I probably meet with 10 or 12 students each week. Levi, for someone like you who already had, let's call it some not only work experience, but kind of advanced training in the field of data science and analytics, what brought you to us? Uh, sure, yeah. So I think I was in a unique uh, position in that I had some experience. I also knew I wanted to go back to school. I would say I looked at kind of a spectrum of programs. On one end, I looked at kind of more analytically inclined MBA programs. And on the other end, I was considering going back for like, say, a master's in statistics. And what I really realized is, you know, much like the role itself of data science, uh, I wanted something interdisciplinary. Um, and I really thought the MSBA program, the fact that it's both housed within uh, a business school, so I knew I'd get to that business side, but also, you, you know, Goizeta itself within Emory, this institution that has a wonderful liberal arts background, I knew I'd be able to get kind of that interdisciplinary um, feel to the program. Uh, and then I guess another thing that drew me to it is I wanted to experience, I wanted to have the option of cohort style learning. I think there is a place for online learning and for some individuals that works very well. Um, for, for me, myself, I really value uh, getting to know my classmates, getting to spend time with them socially. Just this past weekend, I went to a really awesome birthday party. Um, and so I wanted that experience as well. Um, and I'd say the little cherry on top there is it's, is it's historically been a very international program. Um, so I am from Atlanta. Emory was a school I would visit as a kid. Uh, I'd go to the museum here. And so it's really awesome getting to know some classmates from other countries um, who have different experiences that they bring into the classroom. Well, with the intensity of the learning, we are, I'm reassured that there are times to celebrate the birthdays of, uh, of, of your classmates. Um, of, uh, interdisciplinary aspect. I mean, I suppose this is one of the things about the MSBA, whether it's banking uh, and finance, whether it's healthcare, whether it's marketing. I mean, the, the skills that you're learning will be applicable across so many industries. Are, are you aware of the, the, the many opportunities that that's creating? Uh, yeah, I would say so. So for me personally, um, I'm choosing to go into the world of consulting, a world that I had previously worked in um, postgraduate level. That said, um, we have these uh, capstone projects. I, I explain a little bit as like an externship or a co-op. Um, and my externship client is in the financial services industry. So I'm getting that exposure um, you know, to this world of heavy quant modeling um, that I'm sure will serve me, you know, in in consulting, um, but also gives me that option of later on if I if I choose uh, to go into a different industry or move over to finance, it, it it will serve me well there. And I know that some of my classmates, for example, um, they're going into technology, um, so they're going to be doing probably even more hardcore software engineering than than myself. So, yes, it does prepare you, I'd say, for a wide variety of outcomes. And between the yeah, so if I may, modeling. if I may follow on that for just a moment, sure. and I know you talked with Renee yesterday. Um, one of the things I think is really great about our program is that it prepares our students for a wide array of careers in data science and analytics. For example, you know, Levi's going into consulting where there's sort of a more holistic approach to you know the whole chain of the whole value chain of consulting with a business and delivering solutions some of our students get roles that are more kind of hardcore data scientist and, and even engineering to a certain degree some of our students take on roles in companies where they're a functional data analyst for example a marketing data analyst or a supply chain data analyst and that's one of the things I think, you know, it is advent, it's an advantage for our program because a lot of times uh, most are not like Levi. They don't have as much experience out there in the world. And so they don't know what they don't know when they come into the program. So we prepare them for a variety of options. So, so consulting is in your future. 
future, uh, Levi, and you described others perhaps with a, with a heavy tech focus. Uh, tell me a little bit about the work that you do with Renee and her team in career services to, to then get this feel through the capstone, the practicum, uh, and a sense of orientation of, of where your career might head next. Yeah, sure. So for me, probably the biggest delta in terms of my own expectations of the program versus what I've happily encountered is um, I went to a very large uh, school for undergrad, great business school, but lots and lots of students. And I came here and I've really been shocked and surprised by how personalized um, the both career coaching has been, as well as, the, again, that externship capstone experience. So on the career coaching side, I knew I wanted to come consulting. That has a very tight cycle. It has a very, um, it's very early. You come onto campus, you're already recruiting. Um, and I was able to get one-on-one -on -one coaching um, with an experienced uh, career coach who not only, you know, had experience working with students, but who really understood consulting. I gave him my list. He was like, this is a great list. You know, maybe consider this firm, maybe drop this firm. So he understood that world. And then we were able to do some really realistic um, cases, um, which for most people who do that style of interviewing, that can be very stressful. And for me, it made me almost relaxed as I went through that, that, that cycle. And I really feel like I owe a lot to Emory in that regard. On the capstone side, I think that's been a lot of tailoring. So for, I know for some students, it's their first experience ever having uh, like real world um, data, real world clients. Um, and then for other students, perhaps like myself, who've done some of that world, it's, uh, you know, exposure to a different industry, a different type of, of uh, um, work. So I, I'd say that ends up being kind of tailored to the individual and their own experiences. Um, but the, the net out of all of this is I think that our students are uh, very supported in their career search and then also are able to gain a lot of new knowledge about what they do and don't like or what they perhaps have aptitudes for or and need to work on. So that, that's at least been my experience. Right. Yeah, that's if I may uh, kind of just go briefly into the subject of uh, kind of our clients, as I mentioned, Dr. Chalop and I work really hard to select the right clients. And so, Levi, if you would just talk for a minute about your experience with the client and how they work with you and their commitment to your learning experience. Yeah, sure. Um, so I, my client is awesome. Um, large, large financial institution. Uh, they are extremely invested in what we are building. Um, it is not a toy project that they intend to throw on the scrap heap. Uh, they are interested in our insights. They want to learn new things from us. Um, and then they are very involved. They meet with us every week. Later today, we have a two hour long presentation with them that I'm sure will be highly attended. Our first meeting, they had some other directors in the room, which was super cool. Um, and then on, I'd say more on an extracurricular front, a lot of them have reached out on LinkedIn. They invited us to a, a soccer game. We got to go sit in their box for the Atlanta United game. Um, it's just been a really cool experience. Um, and yeah, they, they, they treat us as if we were, you know, consultants or even some of their employees, which is, which has been really cool. And honestly, not what I expected. I expected it to be a little bit more of an academic exercise. Um, but yeah, it's been awesome. And in the constant dialogue, Scott, that you have with recruiters across so many sectors, what sort of feedback uh, are they sharing uh, about uh, Levi <laughs> individually, uh, but just about students, you know, over the last four or five years and, and the skill sets, but you know, the qualities that they identify in them that make them such a great hire? Yeah, I would say one of the uh, top things that I hear is that our students are able to hit the ground running. Right. And part of that is because, you know, kind of putting aside folks like Levi, who already kind of have been out there in the world doing this, that many of us, you know, probably 70 percent of our students have not. And there's a certain amount of uh, acculturation to a work environment that's necessary to hit the ground running. So not only do we focus on that during the practicum or capstone project is that throughout the program, we emphasize and give both formal and informal guidance and coaching on professional behavior, how to interact, 
how to talk to folks about their business problem, how to represent those problems in writing and verbally in a way that is, let's say, consumable um, by clients. And when I say clients, right, that could be, you know, in, as an internal or external consultant, because at the end of the day, if you're, you know, providing analytical service, even if you're inside a company, you're a consultant. Yeah, well, of course, you founded yourself, uh, Vadra Partners, a data analytics consultancy, mm -hmm. Scott, in ability in, alongside that ability for, you know, heavy quant, quant modeling. Are there skills that might not immediately uh, occur to our viewers in terms of storytelling, you know, to, to bring this data from which informed decisions can be made? Oh, definitely. So another aspect of our program is that throughout the program, we have a set of workshops led by actually a, a gentleman who's a professor emeritus who uh, worked at McKinsey for a while, then he taught in the business school for years and has quite literally written the book on the life cycle of consulting projects. And one component of that is purely about the storytelling. And I think one of the things that, you know, rings true to me from my career uh, as an analytics consultant is that it's not just about, okay, we got all this stuff, now let's tell a story. We have the story in mind right from the beginning, right? And sort of that storyline, which does evolve during the project, but the fact that we know we're going to have to tell this story and there are certain methodologies for optimizing the telling of the story that those influence the understanding of the project along the way right is that something that you're mindful of levi whether we define them as soft skills behavioral skills however best to to capture that that when you compare to entering the program uh, mm -hmm. you know, more than a year ago to where you are today that that complementary skill set that's gone alongside uh, the ability to to crunch the data sure yeah I'd, I'd say the way i think of it manifesting is twofold so the first would be you know we have lots of practice presenting um, both externally to our client but also many of our classes have a final presentation component so you spend the whole semester working on a project and at the very end, you have to give a lengthy presentation and kind of defend some of the decisions you've made. And then I also think the other way it manifests is a lot of the, the program is group work based, which coming in, um, like I, I'm a little bit of an introvert. I knew that would be a challenge for me. And to be honest, it has been. But I also think it's it's pushed me to think about the ways in which I, I interact with others. And um, so, for example, like my capstone team, we've had like I'd say five hours of work in the last 12 hours that we've worked on together. Um, late night, but just our spirit decor of where we are now versus the beginning of semester is is massively improved. And, you know, that's been a big learning um, uh, experience for me. Um, so, yeah, so soft skills externally, but also soft skills in terms of how I deal with my coworkers and, and my, my teammates. And, and as you, know, you look I at really, the program really, today. Uh, I don't care for that term soft skills myself. Um, because they're skills, right? right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I know that's the use of that term is to contrast it with the more engineering and math oriented parts of, of the profession, but there are definitely methodologies that people can learn that facilitate the adoption and ultimate um, value generating capability within a business th that their analytical solutions can provide. Right. And, and with the skills that you're then developing, Scott, at, at Goizetta, um, you mentioned earlier, if there are some fundamentals in calculus uh, statistics, but you know, others that could put in the work, perhaps people that are beyond um, those sort of areas in terms of their background, um, do you have individuals in the class that didn't have the engineering perhaps background and are thriving and flourishing with everything that they're picking up in the MSBA? Yes, we do actually. Now I will say this, that we 
want to ensure that folks can do the work. So for example, if you don't have calculus, right, we ask that you prepare yourself by taking a Coursera course. And if you can pass that, then you're qualified to join us, right? right. I mean, we actually had a, a person two years ago who was a fine arts major. Um, she was a dancer. Um, and so she ultimately was highly successful in the program and now uh, has a career as a senior data analyst uh, at Disney. So yeah, it's, it's, you know, again, and here's another thing I, not everyone would agree with me, but, you know, I've probably hired a couple hundred people in this field throughout my, you know, couple decades and a half in industry. I truly believe that if you really love data analysis and thinking about how do I apply that to a real problem, right? That you can do this work. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that. Yeah, right. And I mean, in terms of the, you know, the breadth of experience and profiles coming into the program, Scott, you know, those that have recently completed undergrad, but similarly with those that maybe it's in, you know, everyone's talking about big data and they want to make that transition. I imagine also the uh, X MSBA that you're launching for working professionals that want mm -hmm. to develop these skills. So you, there must be tremendous diversity in the pro profiles in the classroom. Oh, very much so, you know, and that's really interesting for us as we prepare uh, to launch the XMSBA. One of the things that I observed, you know, in my career uh, when I was in industry is that there are many people in the organization, they may be in, uh, you know, IT, they may be in finance, uh, they may be in marketing, who want to get into a career that is data science and analytics, right? And one of the, the problems with making that transition is that, for example, when I was the leader, you know, I'm kind of like, well, yeah, I think that's great and you're probably capable, but I need somebody who can do the work now, right? And so, and again, not to... Uh, criticize or, you know, sort of uh, denigrate the, the value of some of these online programs. But the reality is, I know tons and tons of people who were in, you know, sort of the market segment I described, like, they may be in some part of the technology, uh, gr some technology group in the organization. Um, and it just doesn't kind of launch them into the data science world because they don't get the full package, right? Which means how do I talk to a business person or somebody who's a leader in an organization and understand their, their strategic objectives, the specific business processes involved uh, that, that may benefit from an analytical solution. How do I translate that into something useful, yeah. right? And it's like pretty hard to learn that on a, in an asynchronous online format. Yeah, yeah. And, and Levi, of course, uh, there are no invites to the director's box at uh, Atlanta United <laughs> for those individuals. Um, no doubt a highlight, but as you look back, uh, at you know both the intensity of the studies, the bonds with your classmates, what, what do you identify as as real highlights of the program for you? Uh, sure, yeah. So I'll give some obvious ones, and I'll give some per personal ones. So an obvious one for me was very early on in the program, um, we went down to a uh, U.S. military base and did a leadership course um, with a, a I think I believe he's Professor Emeritus, or he's affiliated with Emory, um, former general. Um, and they took us through some obstacles and it was a really awesome team bonding experience that also, I think by virtue of being on a military base, got people out of their comfort zone really quickly. So that was a really cool way to get to know people really quickly. Um, another experience that stands out is, is last semester, honestly, just 
grinding through group and study sessions with my teammates and getting to forge those relationships. Like at the time, doesn't feel great, but like looking back on it, like, you know, ordering takeout to the business school as we're studying for seven hours together on a Sunday was, was pretty fun. Um, and then on a personal note, uh, we, we're in a kind of like the second of a two-part machine learning course, which is kind of like a, a relatively difficult course in our curriculum. And we just had our midterm and like, to be honest, like I did not do as well as, a, as I'm used to in this program. And I really was like stressing out about it. And then kind of what I realized is, is I came in the program with some skills and that was really helped me the first semester. And a lot of people have caught up. And that is a really cool thing that like, you know, in the moment I'm freaked out, but zooming out on it, pretty cool. Like pretty cool that I'm someone with five years experience. I've been paid to do this for a living before. And th so these people, like you had mentioned, Scott, some people with, with very different backgrounds have all caught up and in many cases are now doing better than me. So I think that was this moment of like, wow, this is really working. Um, you know, and I care about these people. I want to see them succeed. So it was, was, was pretty interesting. And then, yeah, looking forward, um, we're going to uh, Museum Jazz Night on Friday with the program. Pretty excited about that. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's just a really fun experience in addition to the pedagogical value of it all. Well, growing up in Atlanta and obviously familiar with Emory uh, as a kid, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you talked about the importance of belonging to such a prestigious business school at, at Goisetta. Mm -hmm. Has that also played out in terms of, you know, the MBA students and just other um, members of, of such a vibrant community? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Perhaps more than I even ex uh, expected. So, for example, there's an awesome mentorship program through Guizetta that we can participate in. So I've been paired with actually an MBA mentor and it's 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 cool getting to know him and his experiences as a, as a he is actually affiliated with analytics, but he's more of a of a leader um, versus individual contributor. So I've gotten to know him really well, and that's through Guizetta. Um, and then also, yeah, just being a part of Emory itself. Like I've met people at coffee shops in town who are also, you know, they're Emory medical students. And we, you know, talk about our favorite spots on campus. Um yeah, I, I definitely feel that, you know, with, within growing up in Atlanta, Emory is this very prestigious place. And, you you know, you see the name on the hospital when you drive through downtown. And it's cool, you know, being a part of that, wearing that T-shirt and, and, you know, you know, being an alum or I will be an alumni, uh, being a member. Um, yeah. Yeah. If I may just so chime in on that, you know, as I as we talked about, I'm new, relatively new to academia. And when I'm talking to companies about working with us, developing partnerships to provide experiences for students, almost never does, uh, does someone say, no, I don't want to talk to you about that. And that has, uh, you know, I may have a great reputation out there, but quite frankly, it's mostly about, oh, you're with Emory? Sure, you've got something interesting to say. Right. Right. Well, you, you must be very proud, Scott, of um, you know, watching these classes coming through, everything that you achieved. The the um, career outcomes that Renee uh, shared from the career services team are insanely good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and love to see more of that. So perhaps um, just summing up why any of that goes at for the MSBA, you've already made a great case. Perhaps also practically next steps for them. Um, how would you recommend that they connect with the school, uh, you know, through the admissions department, talking to students or alumni of the program? What uh, what would you recommend? I'll let Levi go first. Um, I think a really great first step is reach out and reach out to someone on LinkedIn who's an alum or who's a current student. Almost anyone is down to talk about it. Um, I did that. It was very helpful. Um, I think that, you know, those Calculus, math requirements, those are good, but also just thinking through how you're going to phrase your story in your essay. My mom was an Emory employee. I talked a lot about, you know, her, she worked at the museum here. I grew up on campus. I want to be a member. So anything you can do to tie yourself into either Emory or like why you want this analytics career generally is really helpful. Um, and then I think for students who are really, I guess, worried or want to overcome, um, you know, maybe like you have a lower GPA than the average. Um, I think standardized tests are actually a really great opportunity to showcase skill and you can really hone in on them uh, and really showcase on your application. So I think that's an underutilized avenue for some students. Um, yeah. Yeah. So aside from the standard, you know, kind of processes that admissions department use, I have to echo Levi's advice, you know, which is 
reach out to people out there in the world of analytics, right? One of the things that I've discovered is that people who do this work love to talk about it, right? And, uh, you know, so for example, I mean, I've, you know, I've coached people who, you know, I ultimately thought, wow, you know, I don't know if our program is right for you, right? Maybe you should think about this other one. Um, hmm. So, yeah, you know, that's my sort of, again, that's my advice is to, in addition to the normal processes, um, reach out to people. Yeah, yeah. Well, but both of you, uh, through your careers, your expertise, uh, are tremendously good at connecting the dots. I didn't have the best internet connection and, and you were still able to connect the dots of what I was asking you to provide, I mean, such uh, truly enthusiastic uh, and energetic responses uh, about the program. So uh, th thank you, uh, Scott. It's always great to have you at Centre Court. Levi, I, I look forward to following your next steps as you head into the or return to the consulting uh, industry. Thank you for sharing your perspectives and that enthusiasm with the viewers on Centre Court. Thank you, Matt. Good to see you again.